Hey guys, Mayfake1210 here coming at you with a Throwback Thursday review. This review here is of set number 8096. This is Emperor Palpatine Shuttle. This set was released back in 2010 for $60 USD, and this set contained four very cool minifigures. Speaking of those minifigures, let's get right into it. The first two minifigures here are a clone trooper pilot and a medical droid. For the clone trooper pilot, it is pretty standard. It's the same one that came out. The other sets bar the face. The face is meant to look like the uh, 2003 Clone Wars Episode 3 Clone Trooper helmet, which pretty much was a Stormtrooper helmet and a, an Episode 3 Clone Trooper pilot helmet combined to form that. It pretty much just has a little face covering. And then for the medical droid there, nothing too special. It does have the one arm there, which is different. I don't know why medical droids tend to have two same arms, but Either way, it is nice to get the uh, droid legs there in gray, because generally they only come as the taller legs in gray. But otherwise, pretty good figures and pretty nice, but nothing really special. And then for probably some of the coolest Episode 3 minifigures ever made, we do have Darth Vader and Darth Sidious, or Emperor Palpatine. For Palpatine, he is accurate to his Episode 3 appearance. He does have the gray head instead of the tan one. This was a Palpatine released from like 2008 to like 2015, so this was your standard Palpatine. He's actually my favorite. I think he looks the best. He looks the most evil. I see a little bit of the printing's coming off. This is a 10-year-old minifigure now, but otherwise, torso print, it looks very nice. I do like what they did there. And he also does come with a lightsaber, which is very, very cool. And for probably the coolest version of battle-damaged Anakin or Darth Vader there is, this 2010 version had the Darth Vader helmet and a pretty cool face print underneath to make him look like he's been burned and, like, charred to a crisp basically but yeah very cool figure i really do like it it looks very very cool and i like kind of how like the one side is sort of burned off and the other side is sort of on there still it looks very very cool otherwise there's not much going on palpatine doesn't have any back printing and the, neither of these figures have a double-sided face before we get into the shuttle itself this set does include two instruction booklets which, of course, have the box art on the front there. They look very nice. It's actually pretty nostalgic for me because this is one of the very first uh, bigger Star Wars sets that I ever got. In fact, one of the very first Star Wars sets that I actually ever owned. So, pretty nostalgic. In fact, I actually remember checking this set out at Target all those years ago. Okay, and then the ads at the back here. Clone Turbo Tank. I really wish I got that set. It looks very cool. And then the ARC-170 from that year. There was a lot of good sets in 2010 and 11, too. Very good years, and I do hope maybe for the rumored Clone Wars way, they actually bring back this sort of box art style as kind of just an homage and, you know, a little bit of nostalgia. Maybe the Phase 2 Rex on there. But yeah, that's it for the instructions. The shuttle itself is actually pretty big. If you look at the clone pilot next to it, it's not the biggest thing ever. It's, I believe, smaller than the shuttle Titerium, but it isn't a small shuttle Nonetheless, you are getting a good size shuttle for what you were paying for back in the day. Now, if we do look at the front here at the cockpit, this can actually be detached very easily because it's only connected via some Technic pins. It just plugs in there and there. This is an unintentional feature. Of course, you're not intended to do that, but I think it is nice because, of course, you can use that as like an escape pod or something or, you know, have the uh, cockpit of the shuttle just get blown off in battle. I don't know. It's an unintentional feature that I think is actually kind of cool. For the uh, cockpit itself, it's got a very nice rounded design. It looks very, very cool. It's also got some stickers on the window here, which can be lifted up very easily. On the inside there, not a lot going on, not a lot going on at all. You do have a dark green chair in there, and you do have this nice print here, which honestly I think looks very, very good. It's simple, but it gets the job done, and I think it's a very good generic print that you can use. You can take your clone pilot, fold them up like so, and you can easily just plop them in there, close the viewport, and voila, now he is piloting your shuttle. For the rest of the exterior, you do have some guns here, which thankfully there is no uh, flick fire missiles or spring load shooters, anything, stud shooters, nothing in this set, which is very nice. These guns can turn though, which is a nice feature for them. But yeah, there is none of those uh, stud shooters, all that, none of that in this set, which is very cool. Doesn't deteriorate from the build, but, um, on the side here, you can see it's a very, it's a simple design, but I do like the red accents and all the curves that are in this set. I think it looks very, very cool. At the back, you can see you got some engine detailing there, just some Technic parts that are sticking out. 
and you do have this gun here, which can, you know, rotate like that and like that. And then you do have this sliding feature here, which we'll get to in a sec, and this little locking mechanism. The other side here is just a mirror image. And on the bottom, nothing really going on, just a lot of uh, plates and a few Technic parts. You can slide the landing gear here back. You grab the top in here, which is a secure place to grab it. It's perfectly fine. You can fold down the wings, and well, uh, now it is in flight mode. Speaking of the wings themselves, they are very good. They look decent. You know, nothing too much going on there, of course, because it is just the wing. But they do look nice, and I do like them. Slide the landing gear back forward and get back into its land position. Take a look at the top fin here. Move the camera up just slightly. You can see plenty of detail there, just enough that it needs. Of course, it doesn't look as great from this side, but it looks very good from this side. It looks very clean. And you can actually grab this. It is held in there by a few Technic axles, so it's a secure place to grab it and be able to fly around your shuttle. Now, those locking mechanisms I mentioned, there are two at the front here, which you can easily just unlock like so. There is a little bit of friction in them so they don't come undone too easily, which is all in all a very good thing. They can undo the one at the back, and voila, you can take this off the top. Now, normally these panels on the side here wouldn't fall forward like that. However, I am missing a part. This is supposed to be, this construction is supposed to be at the front there. However, I do not have it. Thankfully, this set can be built without it, so that is a very, very good thing. So for the inside here, I just changed my camera angle quick. All right, there we go. You can now see the inside in all of its glory. There's not a lot going on inside. You can see it's pretty open, but you do at the front here have some seats for two minifigures, of course, for Darth Vader and Palpatine. When Darth Vader is finished in the medical center over here, which we'll get to in a sec. See these little two uh, Technic parts here? This is actually lightsaber storage. What you can do is you can slide the lightsabers into there and they just fit behind the seats like that and they are stored for whenever you have this in flight mode. That's something very cool because LEGO generally doesn't include lightsaber storage into their sets, which is kind of annoying because then you have to have like the lightsabers off to the side like that. And that just kind of looks bad in the display. So it's very cool that they actually incorporate lightsaber storage. Otherwise, not a lot going on there. You do have two seats, of course. And at the back here, this is the Coruscant Medical Bay. Of course, it's not Coruscant. It's in Palpatine's shuttle, but I think it works perfectly. As you can see here, you do have a little table, which you can place your badly burned Darth Vader right there. You can, of course, grab your medical droid, throw him over here so we can start working on Darth Vader. But what you're supposed to do is you're supposed to take Darth Vader's helmet here and just have to flip Anakin up there so I can reach there. You're supposed to put the helmet there, flip Anakin down, and push this forward, and voila, Darth Vader has emerged. You might have to push the helmet down a little bit. It's kind of hard to be able to push it on all the way without it being slightly loose, but it can be done. I have done it before. It's just, you have to line up the helmet perfectly, and you have to try to attach this to that cone piece on the bottom there, but it can be done, and I think this is actually a pretty cool feature if I just grab Anakin there. It is a pretty cool feature. Of course, it's not, you know... It's not the biggest thing. It doesn't include a, you know, 2008 Darth Vader to go along with it. So that way you have a fully suited up Darth Vader. But I think it's, it's a decent thing. It's something that I think that fits with this set. I mean, what else are you going to do for the inside of it? This shuttle only appears really at the end of episode three. And honestly, very cool the system that they have there. Works very, very smoothly. And yeah, all I can say about it, it's actually just really, really good. That's really all you can say about it. But, or at least all I can say about it, you might have different opinions. But, either way, to put the roof back on, all I have to do is slide these locking mechanisms down just a little bit. Only the front ones, that way they fit in. You rest it there. Might have to just adjust, adjust it a bit. Yeah, these front locking mechanisms are a little bit harder to get in to their proper places. But, the back one just fits in very easily. And, yeah, without further ado... There is the shuttle back in flight mode. You can fit all the minifigures in there if you do want. I didn't, obviously, but you can. I've done it. It's very easy. And yeah, one of the cool things about this set, though, is you can have this Darth Vader thing, you know, the helmet part. You can slide in all the ways. That way it's not sticking out like that at the back, which is very good. If they didn't have that, that would be so annoying. But otherwise, very, very good. But yeah, that's all that there is for the set. Now let's get on to the outro. So that's all the set has to offer. And 
to be honest, this is a very good set. 2010, 2011 had a whole bunch of great sets, I know, but this is definitely one that stands out. First off, it's a vehicle we've never seen in LEGO and haven't seen since. And in episode three, this is an interesting shuttle design. It's something that is reminiscent of the Imperial shuttle, but it's different. And it's just something that catches your eye very quickly and has just a nice design that I think looks cool. Here, I think LEGO actually captured it perfectly with the red accents, the white, and it's got the nice imperial feel, you know, that transition time from the Republic to the Empire. It's got that nice feel and it just looks very, very good. To get this set, back in the day, it was $60. Nowadays, you're looking about $80 to $100 to get this thing brand new, which I think is perfectly worth it. This set has, you know, it's got a nice minifigure selection. It looks good, and it is actually a very decent Imperial shuttle. Used, you can probably find it for about $40 to like, I don't know, maybe $60. That's what I've seen on Bricklink and eBay, but I do highly recommend getting this set, and I think... If you do get it, you won't regret it. It's got a whole bunch of good minifigures. It's got nice play features. And just from a display standpoint, it looks really good. But that's my opinion on the set, guys. What's yours? Leave that in the comment section down below. If you did enjoy this review, please leave a like rating on the video. That would be greatly appreciated. And if you are new here and you do want to see more future content from me, please consider pressing that subscribe button. And that's it for me, guys. I do hope you enjoyed this review. And I will see you all in the next video. Till then, peace out. Bye.